the Orion constellation, one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky. The name was given to us by the ancient Greeks, Orion, the great hunter, born of Medusa's sister Uriel and Poseidon, god of the sea. But man has been observing Orion long before Greek mythology. Cave paintings as old as 35,000 years depict this hunter of the night sky. With a lineage of gods, some of you may be having second thoughts about leaving home and visiting the great hunter. Perhaps visitors are not welcome, but if you're curious like me, the journey is worth the risk. Perhaps Orion is proud of his treasures in the night sky and welcomes visitors to share in the wonders of the universe. But before starting a journey, it helps to know where one is going. So how do we find Orion? First, we must start our journey when Orion is home. As our journey is starting in North America, Orion is visible to us from late fall through early spring. Starting in late October, about an hour and a half after dark, look to the east and you will see Orion starting its climb over the horizon, eventually reaching its highest point in the southern sky. But with so many lights in the night sky, how does one recognize the Orion constellation? We are in luck. Orion is one of the most easily recognized constellations in the night sky. The most recognizable feature, and a good place to start, is to look for a group of three stars in a straight, almost horizontal line. This group of stars is called Orion's Belt. The star marking the left of Orion's Belt is called Altanach, a 1.88 magnitude star 800 light years from Earth. The middle of Orion's Belt is marked by Alnilum, a 1.69 magnitude star 1,342 light years from Earth. And finally, we have Mintaka, a 2.49 magnitude star located just 916 light years from Earth, which marks the right side of Orion's belt. If we look upward from Altanach, we can spot a red orange star that marks Orion's right shoulder. This star is called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse ranges in magnitude from 0 to 1.6 and is 642 light years from Earth. Looking south from Altanach, we can spot SAFE. SAFE is a 2.09 magnitude star, 720 light years from Earth. Looking upward from Antaka, we see Bellatrix. Bellatrix is a 1.64 magnitude star, 244.6 light years from Earth. Looking south from Antaka, we can spot Rigel. Rigel's magnitude varies from 0.05 to 0.18 and is 860 light years from Earth. Our journey begins. The first stop in our journey is Rigel, and as we approach, we see Rigel is more than a point of light in the night sky. Rigel is massive, a blue supergiant 21 times as massive as their own sun and 79 times the diameter. If her sun were the size of a dime, Rigel in comparison would be roughly the size of a volleyball. But as impressive as Rigel is, it has already moved off the main star sequence. Despite being a young object in our universe, 8 million years old by some estimates, Rigel has depleted its hydrogen and has entered the end of life phase. Sometime within the next million years, Rigel will go nova, ending its life as a black hole or a neutron star. Our next stop is Betelgeuse, the red-orange star that marks the right shoulder of Orion. As we approach we stand in awe. 
Even Rigel appears small compared to this massive red supergiant. Betelgeuse is 700 million miles in diameter and is 20 times more massive than our own sun. If Rigel were the size of a baseball, by comparison, Betelgeuse would be the size of a beach ball. Our own sun would be a mere speck compared to Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a cosmic example of living fast and dying young. A relatively young star, less than 10 million years old, Betelgeuse is a rebel. A renegade star that was ejected from its birthplace close to Orion's belt, the star is estimated to be traveling at 30 kilometers a second and has created a bow shock four light years wide. But, despite all its attitude and show, Betelgeuse is a dying star. Sometime in the next 100,000 years, Betelgeuse will go up in a supernova, finally ending its life as a black hole or neutron star. In typical Betelgeuse style, it will make sure its death will not go unnoticed. The supernova will be visible from Earth becoming the brightest object in the night sky and even visible during the day for a time. Our next stop is M42, or commonly known as the Orion Nebula, 1,344 light years from Earth. Located just below Orion's belt, it is the middle point of light on Orion's sword, a cosmic wonder made up of gas, dust, and stars. Unlike Betelgeuse and Rigel, which represent the end stages of life in our universe, Orion's Nebula represents birth and a new beginning. Inside the high density areas of nebulas, gas and dust come together to form bigger and bigger clumps. Eventually, these clumps collapse under the weight of their own gravitational attraction. During this collapse, if enough heat is generated in the core of the collapsing cloud, a prostar is formed. Many of these prostars will go on to form new stars. Around 700 stars in various stages of formation have been observed in the Orion Nebula. As we take a step back, we realize the Orion Nebula is just one part of what is known as the Orion Cloud Complex. This great complex extends throughout the entire Orion constellation and is home to other nebulas to include the famous Horsehead Nebula, the Flame Nebula, and Barnard's Loop. The time we have left on our journey is growing short at least our perception of time aboard our spacecraft. But we still have time to visit two more wonders of the Orion constellation, Bellatrix, marking the left shoulder of Orion, and Safe, marking the right knee of Orion. As we pass by Bellatrix, like Betelgeuse and Rigel, we see Bellatrix is also a large star, 8.6 times more massive than our sun. Bellatrix is also older, 25 million years old by some estimates, old enough for the giant to have exhausted its hydrogen and begin its journey toward a violent end. Our last stop is Safe, another giant 15 times more massive than our own sun and 20 times bigger in diameter. Safe until recently was estimated to be about 11.5 million years old, but more recent studies suggest it may be much younger, 6.2 million years old. But even a few million years makes no difference in SAFE's condition. Like the other massive stars we have visited, SAFE is estimated to have exhausted its fuel of hydrogen and will eventually go nova. It makes one wonder, in just a short time in cosmic terms, one to two million years, what will the Orion constellation look like? Our time is up. I hope you've enjoyed our journey. As we head home, I hope your interest in the Orion constellation has grown and you will take time to visit this wonderful location in our night sky.